Welcome to the KG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So we are going through our EKG coding reference guide that's available online. And we're now in part three, this section here. Okay. And we're looking at different types of AV block. In this lecture, we'll look at uh, second degree AV block, specifically Mobitz type two. All right. And we're making our way through this. We've gone through part one where we looked at the general features, P wave uh, abnormalities, atrial enlargement, rhythm, sinus rhythms, junctional rhythms, ventricular rhythms. You can go back and listen to those if you're interested. And now we're in this part three where we've go been going through these different types of AV blocks, these conduction delays. Now, if you don't have access and you want to follow along, all you have to do is put this link into your search bar put your email address in, click submit, put your email in, you'll get a link that you'll click and then you'll have instant access, okay? And we've made this free and available for our colleagues um, here at Mayo Clinic and so you can use it as well, okay? It's been quite helpful. And if you're returning, again, you could submit and just bypass that. So hopefully uh, this is helpful for you. If you want to uh, look at our courses and other things available, go to www.ekg.md and click here, okay? And I think we have a discount, so at the end of the lecture, we'll give you a code if you want 25% uh, off our new course and books. Okay, so let's get started. So second degree AV block Mobitz type two. So we've looked at type one, all right? And we saw in, just to review these, so the AV blocks and to see where we're at, the first degree, we had constant prolonged PR interval. So increase in that PR interval. And we had no dropped beats. Now we have second degree AV block and we're gonna, we looked at one, two, and then eventually we'll look at third degree or complete heart block, okay? But we won't do that here. Now in second degree type one, okay, we had increase of the PR interval that was progressively increasing. So progressive, increase in the PR interval until you had a dropped beat and that pattern would uh, then repeat itself. Okay, so increase, remember longer, longer, longer drop, that's a sign of Wenckebach, that's type one. Now in type two, what we'll look at here is we have a constant PR interval and then we have a non-conducted beat or intermittent dropped beat, okay? So again, type uh, Mobitz type one, we had increase until the AV node fatigued enough that it could not conduct, and then we had a drop beat. In this case, we just have conduction that is normal, normal, and then you all of a sudden you have a dropped beat, okay? So let's take a look at this, all right? So in this case, you have intermittent dropped QRS complexes and non-conducted P waves without a, a prior PR interval lengthening as we saw in type one of the second degree AV blocks. So normal constant PR interval when the PR, when it's conducted. So if you look at this EKG, look here, you'll see this P wave and this. Remember that if we have a biphasic P wave like that, okay, here's our QRS complex and we may see that in V1, these biphasic P waves, they are normal, okay. Now, so here's your P wave, your PR intervals from the beginning of our P wave to this portion. And we're seeing that this is constant. There's no prolongation. And then there's a conducted QRS complex. So PR intervals normal, conducted complex. PR intervals normal, conducted complex. P wave here, no conducted complex. And then it goes back to its normal PR interval with a conducted. Then all of a sudden you have a P wave, non-conducted beat. Okay, then you have a P wave that's with a normal PR interval, conducted beat, P wave here with a normal PR interval, conducted beat, P wave, no conducted beat. So notice that you have just a P wave and then there's no beat, okay? But every time you do have a beat, you have a P wave with a normal PR interval. So there's no prolongation of that as we saw uh, with the previous one. Now, if it is prolonged, it'd be constantly prolonged. So that's the main thing, that it's a constant PR interval, and then you have these intermittent dropped beats, as we see here. So that's this one here. 
Now, what we have in this case is conduction uh, failure at the his Purkinje system, so below the AV node. So if you take a look, let's just erase some of this here, in our conduction system, it's always good to review that here. So we use our box diagram to simplify it. Here's our right atrium, our left atrium, right ventricle and left ventricle. Conduction system starting up here in our, with our sinus node. We have these internodal pathways that come to this AV node. Okay, so this is the AV node. We have a Bachmann bundle that comes to the left atrium. We have the his bundle subdivides into a right bundle branch. And we have a left bundle branch. So remember, it has two fascicles, a left anterior and posterior fascicle, anterior and left posterior fascicle, okay? And that's why you probably heard of left posterior fascicular blocks or left anterior fascicular blocks. That's because of those are individually blocked. So let's look here. So we have conduction from the sinus node coming down <clears throat> to the ventricles. And what we're saying here is happening is that you have this conduction failure at the his Purkinje system. So pretty much below the AV node, somewhere down here where you may have some conduction failure, okay? And that's what's going on. There's pretty much a block below that AV node that's causing failure of conduction. So you have intermittent dropped beats. You may have a P wave because there's atrial depolarization, but then it cannot get through. So the P waves form, it doesn't get through, so you have no QRS complex, and that's what we're seeing. A P wave here, no complex. P wave, no complex, okay? Same thing here, and so forth, all right? And notice that there's no <clears throat> change. The big thing that's different from first degree is that there are dropped beats. Remember, in first degree, there are no dropped beats, okay? So second degree and onwards, we can have some dropped beats, especially here, okay, these two. So again, differentiate them. Constant increase in PR interval, and no drop beats is first degree AV block. Second degree, Mobitz type one or Winkybach is when you have progressive lengthening of the PR interval and a drop beat. Constant PR intervals and then drop beats is Mobitz type two, which we're seeing here, all right? Now causes can be from an anterior heart attack, MI, idiopathic conduction system fibrosis, mitral valve repair, myocarditis, Lyme disease, rheumatic heart disease, many causes, amyloid, lupus, sarcoid, uh, hyperkalemia may result in this, medications that slow conduction at the AV nodes, such as beta blockers, digoxin, calcium channel blockers, amiodarone can do this. Now, the clinical significance, well, these patients actually are at risk of hemodynamic compromise, unlike where we saw with Mobitz type 1, less often, these patients are at a greater risk, okay? They're at risk of severe bradycardia and progressing to complete AV block. And that's why these patients often get that, a pacemaker place. So the main thing you wanna notice here is this point here, constant PR interval with all the conducted beats, all right? So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you are able to differentiate between these blocks, all right? And in the next one, we'll take a look at complete or third degree heart block. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here, over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are, uh, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? 
and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows, uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.